if you take something like Mexico City, something you imagine already is a big place, and something like Moscow, for example, just look at how big Moscow is. And now compared to Atlanta, these really big stretched out American cities, you see Moscow is still so much bigger, even though Atlanta, compared to some decent-sized European capital, is already kind of big again, although Stockholm is bigger than I initially thought. Hello everyone, welcome to a new video. The map that you see in front of you is a very interesting map of the world that shows the Mercator, Mercator projection versus the actual or true size of the countries in the world. Um, the Mercator projection map is the ones you find in your school geography books. It is the most commonly used two-dimensional projection of um, the Earth. But as with this projection, the countries are distorted and on this image the blue or darker blue or blue green countries in the countries show their actual size in comparison to one another i will come back to this but for now i need to answer a few questions if i can as to what it means that they are distorted why are they distorted and what's anyway, the overall idea behind a uh, map projection. It's, it's a bit tough because it's quite um, mathematical. I have found this very early 2000s, or 90s even, looking website um, that apparently refers to some presentation by Mr. R. Knippers, so thank you Mr. R. Knippers for that, um, that explains a little bit the um, background of map projection not only a little bit actually quite in depth um, so the first thought that needs to be had is that um, the earth is round okay let's agree that this is true and if you wanted to display a map of the earth in a book or you know just on a map that you could hang on the wall you need to bring what is three-dimensional in two dimensions and that works but it doesn't work without flaws or issues or problems cylindrical conical and azimuthal are three ways of doing it you imagine the globe and you imagine a big sheet of paper and in the cylindrical approach you wrap you, you kind of um, cylindrically wrap the paper around imagine that you would almost like imprint everything on this globe onto this paper and then lay the paper flat. With the conical approach, same, the paper is like this and as a mutal, the paper is just, you know, flat two dimensions against the three dimensional globe and it's just kind of imprinted on the paper like this. By imprinted, I mean, imagine you had a globe that had ink on it and you would just kind of press this globe as hard as you can on this paper and then um, roll it as well, so you have the whole 360 of the globe on the paper. Um, this would always distort the globe. Now, what do I mean by distort? Well, since two dimensions and three dimensions are not so easily uh, combinable in that sense, a distortion is happening when a country then gets represented in a size bigger or smaller than it actually is for the matter of um, fitting um, on this projection. And the idea behind every projection, that is behind every attempt to put a 3D globe on a 2D piece of paper, is to well either try to represent the 3D globe as accurate as possible but maybe end up with a kind of map that doesn't fit in any book and looks somewhat strange. Or you say, okay, for me it is important that the countries are in the real sizes, um, or it is important 
that the distances between countries are in the real size or you care about the angles. By angles I mean think about an intersection that goes like this and if the angles wasn't right this intersection would be distorted and maybe be shown like like this somehow if that makes any sense. Um, this is very mathematical and I think still very interesting, a bit um, more difficult to just explain in a few words. So I will show you a few examples before I then move on to what I actually wanted to show you. Um, the most commonly used um, projection is this Mercator projection, named after Mr. James John Jonathan Mercator. Um, this is the map of the world as we know it, for example, from Google Maps, Apple Maps, and whatnot. And this map's focus was um, navigation and, and distances. So distances between things um, are relatively accurate. There's a different Mercator map as well. Then we have here some plate Carré projection. You see the um, Arctic and the Antarctic are a little bit more condensed. Um, so that the actual um, size of the countries is um, better uh, preserved, except the very polar regions. I mean, Antarctica is not as big as it seems here. And you have this projection, um, again with the shape, dist uh, shape distortion here on the poles. Pseudo-cylindrical, Robinson, um, these uh, kind of projections that seem quite uh, accurate somehow um, in terms of uh, you could unfold it, fold it back into a three-dimensional globe but it would be a strange map to have maybe in a textbook um, so how to you know fill up these blanks this is what the Mercator projection um, does it fills these blanks here by kind of curving the countries to the middle of the um, poles, if I get this right. And there are all sorts of other projections, and this is a really fascinating thing um, to get into. Um, I would say um, this is also one of my uh, favorite, the, the azimuthal polar azimuthal, um, just always looks like a kind of NATO radar system somehow to me. I don't know where I got this vision from. Um, this website shows it to you in um, yeah, basically two, three dimensions at once. We have five different projections. This is the projection we are used to. Um, you can click on any country and the map will center around that country as a sort of like 2D, 3D globe. Um, you have others. You see how the world changes if you put that country in focus, that it means in its actual real um, size. Yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure what this does, but for someone that is into this, I think this is a cool website. And anyway, it is a cool website. Um, here you see, um, well, I think the idea is that let's say you see a country like Brazil here and it looks big and you click on it and it looks smaller and this is its real size in relation to um, other countries and you can do this on every projection. You see the actual size of um, the country by clicking on it on this map. I'll put this in the description. Um, something else I found is the true size of Africa by having put all sorts of other countries into it and you see United States, China, India, the whole of Eastern Europe and many of the biggest European countries that doesn't don't seem to be to, to be so big after all all fit in Africa. So Africa which already looks big on the Mercator projection is big because only the poles are rather distorted whereas you know um, Africa is closer to the equator. Which brings me back to this map. Hopefully now you have a little bit more of an idea what this map actually shows you and how, for example, Russia seems gigantic 
and maybe also uses this idea of it being a powerful, gigantic country for its own advantage, because like everyone uses, you know, the same map of the world, the same Mercator projection. Everyone uh, uses Google, you know. But actually, Russia isn't as big as it seems. Still bigger than the US. But, uh, you know, it's not this enormous country that it um, looks like on every map. And yeah, I'm sure you also all know this website already that allows you to type a country. For example, Germany. Here we have Germany. And you can move it around and you see closer to the equator it gets smaller. It's actually the size of Uganda or Kenya. But if you would move it up, you see how it gets, yeah, one could say almost exponentially bigger towards the poles. So that it could be almost um, half of Greenland. Greenland, talking about it, is one of the more uh, famous examples, of course, because it looks absolutely massive. It is big, but it's not as big as it looks. Still bigger than, you know, 10 European countries uh, together. So you can move the country around and understand its um, size in relation to other countries by bringing it closer to um, that other country. Of course, you can. You need to move it to the. Like you cannot just take Russia now and move it to Argentina. Then it will just destroy it again. You need to put it here, and let's say then you take Chile, and you move Chile to the equator to Russia, and you see it has the length of the whole east of Russia here, but not so much more than that. Um, now this also apparently works with states. I've tried earlier to put the state of Colorado here, American state of Colorado, that you can also move around. Um, it just happens to be a rectangular, perfect rectangular. Perhaps an almost perfect rectangular, I'm not sure. And move this around, which is pretty cool. Now one thing this map doesn't do is to do it with cities. Now for cities, I have found this. So here you can type a city, let's say we're interested in Paris, and we want to compare Paris to, let's say, Beijing, for whatever reason. And, okay, we don't have any data for Beijing, it's not a good example then. Let's compare it to New York. So, the red thing is New York, the green thing is Paris. Now, Paris is, of course, big, but... Um, Technically, administratively, the bigger part of Paris is not Paris. So Paris is green, New York is red. So you see how much bigger size-wise New York is. And if you compare Paris to London, it looks even more ridiculous. This red little red thing here in the middle is, uh, by the way, the, the city of London. Yeah, so it's uh, you can really play around with this... Um, Let's go and choose Dubai if we can. Yes, we can. And let's compare it to what makes sense. Well, you can really go free. I want to compare it to Manchester for some reason. And you see the size of Dubai extending into the water. And Manchester very small. I think it also, for example, makes an interesting case if you take something like Mexico City, something you imagine already is a big place, and something like Moscow, for example. Just look at how big Moscow is. And now compared to Atlanta, these really big stretched out American cities, you see Moscow is still so much bigger, even though Atlanta, compared to some decent-sized European capital, Is already kind of big again. Although Stockholm is bigger than I initially thought. What about Copenhagen then? Ah, no data. What about Berlin? Is Berlin bigger than Atlanta? No. Berlin is very big indeed. Also Atlanta is just really cut off 
sharply here. So all these terms and tools that I've shown you now are fun to play around with, um, but they all represent, well, the, the city sizes as just actually as it happens. I mean, of course, cities are also growing and um, expanding, but in terms of country sizes and map projections, um, finding the right projection for the right purpose is crucial and also not to be taken for granted is that we mainly, most of us, if you're not an um, astronomer or, well, a geographer, why would you be an astronomer? Uh, that you're not as, uh, yeah, let's not talk about biologist or something, um, that we have been growing up with a certain way of understanding the world and is due to this map projection but looking at other map projection makes us realize um how well a that, that it's actually um around our planet that maybe countries are not as big or not shaped in the way they always seem and that did this also might influence geopolitical um decision making for example i, I, I talked about russia earlier that you know if uh, you think in um, Moscow to go to um, Siberia by train, it seems like unimaginable um, to do it, but actually Russia is smaller, still takes a week, I know. But, you know, it's just something, what I like about it is that there's an everyday thing, such like a map, very everyday thing, and it's taken for granted, but also someone just kind of came up with it, you know, it wasn't there by default in this world um, when God created the world, you know. So I think that's all very interesting. I hope I didn't blabber um, too much um, and shared my loose thoughts on that topic. Obviously, this is also very mathematical, so I cannot explain you the map projection or the process of doing it in detail. Um, but there are formulas and there are scientists engaging with this and the question is always What's the purpose of a map? Every map has an advantage over another. So thank you very much for watching. And I see you when I see you. Bye bye.